What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is Earthmaster here on the live stream. It is Sunday, August 8th, 2021, the end of the weekend. The end of the weekend for some. Looking at a 5.0 earthquake right around the southern mid or southern Atlantic Ridge. Not mid, definitely southern. We've been seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity down here around the Antarctica area. 5.0, the latest quake. And earlier, there was a 5.5 uh, on the other side of Antarctica, on the other side of the world. Earthquake activity in general kind of been moderate, including a 3.9 tremor. This is not an earthquake, but a tremor off the coast of Florida. If you guys have been kind of paying attention to this on the uh, news and social media, there, uh, let's see here, let me see where it went to. That's not what I wanted. There it is, off the coast of uh, looks like Jacksonville in the Blake Plateau, 3.9. If you guys been watching this, the uh, Navy out there been kind of testing out some explosions, uh, and those explosions are strong enough to send a uh, seismograph wave uh, at a 3.9 level. I mean that's pretty significant for an explosion. This is number three, I believe, within the past, oh, I don't know, past couple months. Maybe it's number four, I can't remember exactly, but uh, definitely not plate tectonics at work here. This is man-caused, human-caused, testing out some uh, explosions and some uh, explosives, I should say, out there off the coast of Florida. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Looking at the rest of the East Coast, relatively quiet as far as the 2.5 and above, the all magnitudes do not add anything significant onto the features out here along the East Coast. Oklahoma, pretty calm. Not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity out there today. Uh, also, Pecos, Texas, not seeing any major movement, just a couple threes over the last 24 hours. <clears throat> West Coast, Cascadia subduction zone, right? We've been watching that for quite a while. A lot of tremor being recorded up here around Southern Oregon, Northern California over the past few months. Getting a little bit of surface quaking. Uh, this 24 kilometer deep 3.4 struck earlier today off the coast, just actually right underneath the coast, I should say, 24 kilometers down dip downstream within the Cascadia mega thrust area. And there was, uh, looks like prior to that, another 1.5 at 22 kilometers. But if you look back over the past week or so, there's definitely been quite a bit of movement here on the, on the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. And a lot of deep movement taking place there. As uh, far as the rest of the Cascadia, pretty quiet. But uh, man, I tell you what, Northern California getting in on some of the action with the... Uh, the deeper movement and I believe that plays a part with the tremor activity that we've been seeing over the past few days here specifically in Northern California and Southern Oregon uh, when you got some tremor that means slippage right what happens what, hap what do I mean when when uh, when I refer to slippage basically the uh, Juan de Fuca plate slipping or sliding subducting underneath the North American plate at a very slow pace not an earthquake but a tremor, so to speak, kind of like a vibrational uh, release. I, I shouldn't say release. Release is not it because we're not seeing any release out here. If anything, we're building up pressure along the Cascadia. Um, it's unlike an earthquake. Tremor is just kind of like a slow slippage between the two plates, down dip, downstream, 25, 35 kilometers below surface. And that's kind of what we're seeing down there. Uh, and sometimes about 40 kilometers or so uh, downstream. So a lot of buildup here in this section of the Cascadia. Kind of watching that, folks. Kind of watching that pretty closely. Uh, let's see. Northern California. No new specific earthquake activity around Lassen. Um, looking pretty quiet up there. Mount Shasta pretty quiet as well. Uh, it's just over at Lake Oroville today. If you didn't see the documentary series that I'm kind of putting out here on the channel about how the drought is playing a major effect on the California reservoirs, go check out the video I just posted today uh, regarding Lake Oroville. It's pretty uh, depressing, let me tell you. 
a little bit of movement around the swarming area of Alder Springs. It's a little area around uh, Northern California, west of the Sacramento Valley up here in the mountains. This isn't around a fire area. Fires, no doubt we got fires up here to the north, but this is not fire caused. Uh, this is uh, earthquake activity that's been happening for uh, quite a few days now. We can go back over the last seven days and see the uh, significant swarming activity. Although the newer earthquake activity that we've seen um, today kind of migrating towards the southeast a little bit, kind of within that direction down here. Uh, but only three, only three earthquakes. Uh, looks like, uh, uh, well, they're all about mid twos. Pretty shallow as well. Uh, geyser activity, standard. Uh, Antelope Valley still seeing some movement over here in the uh, Sierra Nevadas, eastern crest of the Sierra Nevada in the Antelope Valley section. Antelope Valley written well defined on the map. And the uh, San Andreas Fault, a little bit of movement today. Uh, looks like west of uh, the uh, Bay Area, or at least the, the majority of the Bay Area, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, Clara um, Saratoga down here to the south. See, these guys seen a, a little 2.4 right smack dab on the San, San Andreas Fault. So uh, a little bit of movement along that major plate boundary. But other than that, it uh, looks pretty clear for the most part. The creeping section, relatively quiet. Some movement on the Pacific side and the North American movement or the uh, North American plate. Ridgecrest, man, this is kind of down here pretty calm. I mean, compared to other days in the past, this is pretty minimal for aftershock sequences two years later. So we could be seeing an end to that. I don't, you never know. Aftershocks come and go uh, following a major earthquake. So that, that major earthquake struck uh, July 4th, July 5th, about two years ago in the Ridgecrest area. The Garlock fault structure seeing a little bit of movement just off of it this is one to watch very closely i've been kind of saying that uh in the past the shear function fault we can see a major earthquake here along the garlock fault which is it doesn't see too many major quakes uh this could no doubt trigger the southern end of the cascadia it'd be kind of like a one-two punch for southern california if, if indeed that does happen but we will see um, see what the future see how the future plays out. Hopefully that doesn't take place there. Southern California looking pretty quiet. Um, not a whole lot of movement down here for the all magnitudes even map. It's um, it's scattered uh, here and there around the San Jacinto Fault area. Salton Sea no swarming to take uh, to take note of. The Pacific Northwest relatively quiet as well. We're not seeing a whole lot of surface quaking. I'm kind of curious to see what the uh, trimmer map is like. That was from last night. Uh, I haven't seen the current one. What do we got there? 1.9, pretty deep, 13 kilometers up there northwest of Yakima. Uh, volcanoes look pretty quiet for the uh, seismic activity. Intermountain West regions quiet as well, only a couple scattered earthquakes up through Montana and Idaho. Uh, looking at Alaska, the 8.2 that struck uh, a week or so ago, only showing two measly little earthquakes in the aftershock sequences. That's very minimal. Over here towards the Aleutian Islands, the western part, we did see a little bit of uh, up uptick in the larger magnitudes. Not super large, but a 5.4 striking within the subduction zone of the Aleutian Trench. Kind of around the volcanoes up here. Japan, relatively quiet once again. Just a couple fours uh, striking down there. And some deeper movement around the northern uh, Mariana uh, um, Islands. Let's see if I can spit that out. 4.6 down there in Indonesia. Some deeper movement. And... Uh, Oh, the earthquake train around the Port Bella, uh, Vanuatu region, stretching up towards the Santa Cruz Islands. Uh, seeing a little bit of activity as well. Deep movement in this section as well. 
course, there's the uh, 5.5. And if we go down, uh, let's see if that is that going to show us. Yeah, got to go on this side of the map, right on the flat scale. If you're looking at the flat scale map, instead of the globe, one here, one there, around the Antarctic Circle, a couple fives popping off. South America, not a whole lot of movement, folks. Just a little bit of activity along the Peru-Chile Trench. Puerto Rico, pretty quiet on the all magnitudes. Uh, to be honest, that's pretty uh, pretty concerning for this area. Just very minimal, very minimal earthquake activity right now. Hawaii, what's going on out there in the beautiful Hawaii in the Pacific? Kilauea volcano still showing a lot of movement. Uh, far seismicity in the earthquake department. A little movement way up here as well. Kind of watching this movement. We start seeing some deeper activity here. Uh, it's a good sign to watch some of the, these volcanoes over here to the west. Southeast flank looking like a typical day down there with about, uh, oh, I don't know, what do we got? 25 earthquakes or so at that standard 30, 30 kilometer zone. It, it just, it, that's where it happens. Always seeing that earthquake activity down below there every day. Uh, let's check Yellowstone National Park. No, no fear mongering here, folks. This thing is not going to blow. And I got to, I got to repeat myself on some of this stuff because a lot of folks are believing that this is earthquake activity showing up in this red marks here on, on these red errors, right? This is not earthquake activity, just as this is not earthquake activity. These are some type of seismic, um, uh, what's the word instrument errors so to speak. If we go back, I kind of want to show you guys the day before. Let's go back uh, previous day real quick. See if this is going to show. Well, gosh darn it. Let's see if we can go back one more. There we go. Okay. Look at this, guys. This is not volcanic activity. This is not earthquake activity. This is not how earthquakes are reg registered or, this is, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This is not an earthquake signature. Earthquakes do not show up on a seismograph like this. So don't let any, anyone fool you. This is not earthquake activity whatsoever. What it is, it's errors in that department. Little West Thumb. It doesn't always show up like that. Um, they've been having some type of technical difficulties with that station recently. If that was the case, um, there's no doubt this earthquake activity would show up on significantly on other stations. But um, this is days ago. This map is days ago. We did have a series of thunderstorms roll through this area. So possibly um, that's kind of what we're seeing uh, being picked up there. There's thunderstorm activity showing up on some of these seismographs. So um, let's go back to the current day right now. wind in the winter time man when the wind blows up there in wyoming you can see it throughout the seismograph stations it's kind of how sensitive this equipment is it picks up thunderstorms thunder right thunder rolls through the uh the area miles miles down the road wind wind can cause vibrations in the ground in the seismograph readings so I know an earthquake when I see it. I know volcanic tremor when I see it. I know magma intrusion when I see it. And we're not seeing that at Yellowstone National Park. So just making that clear because there's some little bit of fear mongering taking place out there along a couple other YouTube channels. Um, far as specific, well-defined seismic activity taking place in Yellowstone National Park, I don't see it at all. I don't see anything. Maybe a little bit along the Norris Junction. A couple small spikes there indicating some very, very small. I'm talking like maybe 0.1. Some of these couple spikes here. But other than that, no swarming going on. Nothing to even... Man, nothing to write home to Grandma. Yellowstone is not swarming. Yellowstone's not going to blow. There's no magma intrusion. Everything's looking good. Uh, far as the readings go when you look at these maps uh, What else we got here folks trimmer in the Pacific Northwest well, Hopefully this thing pops up here 
We got a blank screen. We got a white screen. What's going on here? Come on. Ooh, come on. PNSN. That, that was kind of odd. That's very odd because normally this thing will load super quick. I never have that delay. Uh, looking at the trimmer. Wow. Nothing. Let me let me refresh that and make sure that's okay. That was pretty quick. Nothing. There's no trimmer at all today. It's kind of weird. But uh, it is what it is. This could explain the lack of activity kind of at the surface areas of the, uh, oh, let's go back here, Pacific Northwest and Northern California. I mean, I'm still kind of, still kind of thinking that trimmer played a major part here with this deeper earthquake off the, or uh, right, right off near Petrolia at 24 kilometers. So, um, but far as the rest of Pacific Northwest, yeah, relatively quiet. So that could explain the lack of activity up here due to no trimmer. Uh, what else do we have folks? I kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit of the fire map out here. This is from, uh, well, today, 8 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, kind of shows the activity up there with the Dixie Fire. Um, the areas in the, well, in the yellow, I don't know if you guys can kind of see, this is a fire heat map from uh, a pretty cool website, zoom.earth. Kind of shows the new activity. The red, kind of the older activity that's burned. But uh, some of the uh, some of the yellow here indicating some newer activity. But don't get me wrong, this is still some heat that's being picked up. But the yellow indicating some very new activity, some spot fires. Heading towards the Susanville area. I don't think it's going to reach Susanville. Susanville is kind of on a plateau uh, at the eastern edge of um, the Sierra Nevadas. Eastern edge of the Sierra Nevadas stretch about here. And then it drops off into the valley of the uh, Susan, Susanville area. Not a plateau, but a valley area. So I don't think it's going to hit Susanville. I'd, I'd be very surprised if it did. Well, that would be very suspicious in my book. Uh, you can see a lot of the smoke heading off to the east, northeast. Thank God that uh, clears us up here a little bit in the valley. Still a little bit of smoke down here in the Chico, uh, Butte County area. But uh, definitely not as bad as it was uh, the past couple days. Uh, some heat up here along the uh, coastal range. Some beautiful areas up here, man. I hate, absolutely hate seeing the uh, forest up here burn. I hate seeing the forest burn anywhere. But man, the Pacific Northwest or the uh, northwestern part of California is uh, tremendous when it comes to beauty. Redwoods and some uh, awesome mountain features up there. It's just, it's disgusting that uh, we got so many fires here. So, all right, folks, I am going to jump off of here for a little bit, kind of monitoring the Earthquake Live 3D stream. If you, like I said, if you didn't check out the Oroville video that I just posted, please go check it out. Um, went up there and did some video uh, video and talked to a few, uh, few folks and some tourists and whatnot. And uh, got some lake level uh, information. Looks, looks well, down here. Looks like we had two five pointers. So that's pretty significant down here around the uh, Antarctica area. Of course, they've been pretty quiet. So it's their turn to get in on some of the uh, the plate movement, right? All right, guys. Have a good night. We will s we will chat you guys a little bit later. But uh, stay safe, and uh, of course, always be prepared. Have an earthquake plan, no matter where you're, you're at, including Florida, I guess. And uh, we chat. We will chat you guys another time. Stay safe, everyone. Peace.